Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Kiran Bendigiri from Graphosis IAS. In this video, let's have a look at six standard, the Earth seven chapter. Our country, India. India is a country of vast geographical expanse. In the north, it is bound by the lofty Himalayas, the Arabian Sea in the west, the Bay of Bengal in the east, and the Indian Ocean in the south. Watch the shores of the Indian Peninsula. So, our India is a peninsula, and uh, we have seen that uh, in the north there is uh, Himalayas, and uh, in the west, Arabian Sea, east, Bay of Bengal, and in the south, Indian Ocean. So, these are the points we have to remember. These are the basic points. India has an area of about 3.28 million square kilometers. So, 3.28 million square kilometers. So, this is the basic thing. And uh, Kashmir to Kanyakumari, 3200 kilometer. Arunachal Pradesh to Kutch, it's about 2900 kilometers. The lofty mountains, the great Indian desert in the Rajasthan, the northern plains, um, Ganga and uh, Brahmaputra plains, the uneven plateau surface and uh, uneven pl uh, plateau that is uh, uh, Deccan plateau and all, uh, and the coast and uh, islands present a diversity of landforms. Coast in the sense near uh, the Western Ghats or near the Eastern Ghats and uh, islands uh, that is Lakshadweep uh, and uh, Andaman and Nicobar uh, these are all present a diversity of landforms right there is a great variety in the climate vegetation wildlife as well as in the language and culture in this diversity we find unity that is reflected in traditions that bind us as one nation India has a population of more than 120 crores since the year 2011. It is the second most populous country of the world after China. So there are many important points and basic points which we have to remember. 328, 3200, 3, uh, 2900. So we can somehow relate these numbers and we can remember and the length is always bigger so uh, I mean uh, like that we can remember the length is bigger uh, as we look on uh, look at the map we can easily see that the length of the India map is uh, bigger so that is uh, 3200 and uh, 300 kilometers uh, yeah, lesser so this is uh, the width is uh, um, uh, uh, 300 kilometers lesser than the length so that is uh, 2900 kilometer and uh, 3200 this is uh, 3.28 so please uh, remember and uh, this is the India map and uh, what we j just saw Arabian Sea, Bay of Bengal, Lakshadweep and uh, Maldives below Lakshadweep there is Maldives and uh, Sri Lanka so straits I hope you remember uh, straight uh, a narrow water body which connects to major water bodies that is straight so which straight is here that uh, we are going to discuss later so our India is uh, uh, surrounded by several countries um, which has uh, borders with several countries like Pakistan, Afghanistan, uh, China and actually this is Tibet uh, it is occupied by China and uh, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Myanmar right so uh, please uh, remember this in this uh, in order and uh, yeah uh, these these stuffs and all and uh, this is the scale
Locational setting. India is located in the northern hemisphere. The tropic of Cancer that we have discussed. 23 degree 30 minutes north. Passes almost halfway through the country. From south to north. Mainland of India extends between 8 degree 4 minutes north and 37 degrees 6 minutes north latitude. So this is 8 uh, degree we can see 8 degree 4 minutes north and 37 degree 7 minutes north latitude in between this and this right uh, from west to east India extends from 68 degree 7 minutes and 97 degree 25 minutes east longitudes so this uh, we have to remember so this is uh, approximately uh, uh, the difference between these uh, two are uh, 30 degree and also these two are approximately 30 degree so we can remember like this um, latitudes 8 degree plus uh, 30 degree uh, we get approximately this number and 68 degree plus uh, 30 degree we get approximately this number right due to great longitudinal extent of about 29 degree there could be a wide differences in local time of places located at two extreme points of India so there is a uh, wide differences in local time as such the difference between these two points would be of about two hours uh, so we have seen if there is a 15 degree difference that would be um, the difference difference of one hour so the difference between these two latitudes are 30 degree so uh, the difference is two hours as you have learnt earlier the local time changes by 4 minutes for every 1 degree of longitude the sun rises about 2 hours earlier in the east than in the west so he has said the same thing um, uh, you have already read earlier why the local time of longitude of 82 degree 30 minutes east has been taken as the standard uh, Indian standard time this meridian or longitude is also termed as the standard meridian of India. So if you have traveled from east to west or west to east, uh, like if you, are, if you are from Bombay or from Bangalore and if you have been to Assam or uh, anywhere to the eastern part, then you might have noticed that sunrise and sunset there is a huge differences from the places you are the peninsula is a uh, piece of land that is surrounded by water on three sides large countries which stretch extensively from east to west do not have a single standard time for the whole country the USA and Canada have seven and six time zones respectively we have only one time zone but USA and Canada have 7 and 6 time zones respectively. India's neighbors China, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Myanmar. Sri Lanka is separated from India by the Park Strait. We have seen the difference of, uh, I mean, definition for strait and uh, the name of this strait which is between Sri Lanka and India is Park Strait. So please remember this park state. Political and administrative divisions. India is a washed country. For administrative purposes, the country is divided into 29 states and 7 union territories. Delhi is the national capital. The states have been formed mainly on the basis of languages. Rajasthan is the largest state and Goa is the smallest state in terms of area.
the states are further divided into districts so we can see uh, almost all the states i am saying almost because telangana has been carved out from andhra pradesh uh, which is not uh, shown here so let's study the map so this is the uh, 64 to uh, 96 what here it is mentioned it is uh, longitude and uh, here 32 degree 24 degree this is uh, latitude okay so the first comes at the top Jammu and Kashmir below that Himachal Pradesh is there uh, right to it Uttarakhand and uh, below it Uttar Pradesh and uh, below the Himachal Pradesh there is Punjab and Haryana we have to remember the adjacent states of uh, each state how many states are adjacent to each states and uh, uh, their capitals also uh, they uh, usually every year uh, one or two questions are asked based on these maps so uh, next to up there is bihar and uh, next to bihar there is jharkhand and west bengal and next to West Bengal there is Assam and Sikkim and uh, next to Assam there is Arunachal Pradesh Nagaland Manipur Mizoram Agartala and uh, we can see that Assam is neighbor for all the northeastern states so please remember this and uh, jharkhand orissa chhattisgarh madhya pradesh gujarat maharashtra goa karnataka andhra tamil nadu kerala so we saw all the states and southern states are Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra and Telangana. Right. So uh, and uh, Lakshadweep, uh, Lakshadweep and Andaman and Nicobar Islands. So the capital of uh, Lakshadweep is Kavaratti and uh, Kerala's Tiruvananthapuram, Tamil Nadu, Chennai. Karnataka, Bangalore, Goa, Panaji, and uh, Telangana, Hyderabad, Andhra, Amravati, Odisha, uh, Bhubaneswar, Chhattisgarh, Raipur, Maharashtra, Mumbai, Gujarat, Gandhinagar, Rajasthan, Jaipur, Madhya Pradesh, Bhopal, UP, Lucknow, Haryana and Punjab, Chandigarh, Jammu and Kashmir, Srinagar, Himachal Pradesh, Shimla, Uttarakhand, Dehradun, Sikkim, Gangtok, Assam, Dispur, Arunachal Pradesh, Itanagar, Nagaland, Kohima, Manipur, Imphal, Mizoram, Aizawl, and Meghalaya, Shillong. Uh, so, we have to observe one more thing. Puducherry, the Karaikal, is within Tamil Nadu it belongs to Puducherry and Mahay this is within Kerala 
but it belongs to puducherry and yanam which is in andhra pradesh but it belongs to puducherry and uh, what we missed dadra and nagar haveli which is here diu and daman here so i think uh, we covered all the places next physical divisions india is marked by a diversity of physical features such as mountains plateaus plains coasts and islands standing as sentinels in the north are, are the lofty snow capped himalayas him plus alaya means the abode of snow the himalayan mountains are divided into three main parallel ranges the north northern most is the great himalaya or himadri northern most the world's highest peaks are located in this range middle himalaya or himachal lies to the south of the himadri many popular hill stations are situated here i uh, find out the names of five hill stations the shivalik is the southern most range shivalik at the southern most range right the northern indian plains lie to the south of the himalayas they are generally level and flat these are formed by the alluvial deposits laid down by the rivers the indus the ganga the brahmaputra and their tributaries these river plains provide fertile land for cultivation that is the reason for high concentration of population in these plains in the western part of india lies the great indian desert it is a dry hot and sandy stretch of land it has very little vegetation so uh, indian desert very little vegetation it is in the western part to the south of northern plains lies the peninsular plateau so southern part uh, which is uh, in v shape uh, lies in the peninsular plateau it is triangular in shape the relief is highly uneven this is a region with numerous hill ranges and valleys aravalli valleys so we have seen uh, in the map one of the oldest ranges of the world border it on the northwest side the vindhyas and the satpuras are the important ranges so we have to remember aravalli vindhyas and satpura near narmada and tapti the rivers narmada and tapti flow this uh, flow through these ranges these are west flowing rivers that drain into the arabian sea in india there are uh, many rivers uh, which flows uh, to the eastern side and drain into the bay of bengal but there are few rivers like narmada and uh, tapi uh, and also indus river which drain in uh, into the arabian sea the western ghats or sahyadris border the plateau in the west and eastern ghats provide the eastern boundary while the western ghats are almost continuous the eastern ghats are broken and uneven the plateau is rich in minerals like coal and iron ore so we have to remember western ghats are almost continuous eastern ghats are a uh, uh, broken and uneven the plateau is rich in so we have read uh, plateau is always uh, rich in minerals that is uh, coal and iron ore that's why there are many uh, steel plants in plateau to the west of the western ghats and the east of the eastern ghats lie the coastal plains the western coastal plains are very narrow the eastern coastal plains are much broader there are a number of east flowing rivers the rivers mahanadi godavari krishna 
Kaveri drain into the Bay of Bengal. These are the main rivers. Mahanadi, Orissa, Godavari, Krishna, um, Andhra, uh, Kaveri, uh, which takes birth in Karnataka and uh, drain into the Bay of Bengal uh, near Tamil Nadu. These rivers have formed fertile deltas at their mouth. The Sundarban Delta is formed where the Ganga and Brahmaputra flow into the Bay of Bengal. So Sundarban uh, comes here, uh, uh, here, right? Uh, uh, and uh, Sundarban uh, is uh, uh, some part is in India and some part is in where, uh, sorry, this uh, Bangladesh. Alluvial deposits. These are very fine soils brought by rivers and deposited in the river basins. So this has to be remembered. What is alluvial deposits? Fine soils by brought by rivers and deposited in the river basins. Tributary. A river or stream which contributes its water to a main river by discharging it into main river from either side. So there are many tributaries to, uh, for uh, Ganga, Brahmaputra, Indus, Kaveri uh, and Krishna and all. So what are those uh, tributaries? Uh, please uh, think about it. The Ganga and the Brahmaputra form the world's largest delta, the Sundarbans delta. The delta is, a, uh, is triangular in shape. It is an area of land formed at the mouth of the river where rivers enter the sea that point is called the mouth of the river uh, these are the things uh, which we are going to study in depth in the future videos also so these are the basic things uh, and also one more point i want to add i wish to add uh, sundarbans sundarbans is uh, very famous for uh, tigers uh, tides and uh, crocodiles it's also a very beautiful place uh, adventurous place too uh, right many girls are uh, named after rivers example yamuna mandakini kaveri we might have heard many times these names uh, coral islands corals are skeletons of tiny marine animals called polyps when the living polyps die, their skeletons are left. Other polyps grow on top of the hard skeleton which grows higher and higher, thus forming the coral islands. So this is the basic things, a uh, basic thing how corals are formed. So uh, right now we have to remember coral and polyps. This is from tiny marine animals called polyps just remember these two words cp right and uh, again we are going to uh, study about uh, corals in depth in the upcoming videos two group of islands also form part of india lakshadweep islands are located in the arabian sea these are coral islands located off the coast of Kerala. The Andaman and the Nicobar Islands lie to the southeast, southeast of the Indian mainland in the Bay of Bengal. So Lakshadweep we saw and, uh, and also Andaman and Nicobar Islands. It is uh, at the southeast. And one more point, tsunami is a huge sea wave generated due to an earthquake on the sea floor earthquake can happen due to many reasons and uh, the earthquake within the sea generates huge wave that huge wave uh, cause many disasters uh, that is called uh, tsunami so this is the end of the chapter thank you